Resuming debate. Bon ordre, the Honourable Member, Westminster Burnaby. Merci beaucoup, Monsieur le Président. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. I will be sharing my time with the wonderful member for Courtney Alberni, who will be using the second part of my speaking time, if you'll allow, Mr. Speaker. I think it's pretty clear what's happening here. Um, I, I saw, as we all did during the last campaign, Liberals going across the country committing to move towards legalization of marijuana. That was a commitment that they made. Uh, and there were a lot of Canadians, I think, in good faith that said, OK, we support that idea. And I'll, I'll come back to decriminalization in a moment. So we're going to vote for the Liberal Party. And today, we are seeing, uh, in case after case after case, Liberal Party members standing up with speaking notes that are prohibition speaking notes. They're speaking notes that were exactly the same as the speaking notes we saw under the previous Conservative government, the same way, except at the end of their speaking notes, they say, but eventually, maybe, we'll actually move to legalize uh, uh, simple possession of marijuana. And so uh, we'll, we'll change all those bad things that we've just said about uh, uh, and, and all the good things we've said about prohibition. Uh, so, Mr. Speaker, let, let's understand the logic here. Liberals made a commitment, and uh, as we've seen over the last eight months, they've broken well over a hundred of their promises so far. They made a commitment, solemnly, before all Canadians, that they would move to legalization. He said it would be within a few months. Uh, around uh, April 20th, we, uh, we heard that they were going to make a big announcement. The big announcement was, uh, we're not announcing anything, maybe in a year, maybe in two years. If we understand the member from Scarborough Southwest in his previous comments, not today, but at another time, he said it's, uh, it won't be done during the first mandate of the Liberal government. It won't even be done before the next election, Mr. Speaker. So we now have this double speak from the Liberals committing to something during the election campaign that is uh, being betrayed on the floor of the House of Commons today and will be tomorrow if the Liberals vote against this motion to decriminalize. Uh, there will be a betrayal of the commitments that the Liberals made during the election campaign. And for Canadians that are following this debate, I would suggest that over the course of the summer, they, uh, they question their Liberal MPs who campaigned on one thing and are doing something that is quite different today, putting forward a prohibition uh, speech and speaking notes when what they should be doing is actually being concerned about the thousands of Canadians uh, overwhelmingly younger people in the 20s who are going to have a criminal file, criminal record for the rest of their lives because of the actions of the Liberals that are being taken uh, over the course of this week. Instead of putting in place a sensible decriminalization strategy, and I'll come back in a moment to those governments that have put in place a decriminalization, instead of saying, okay, yes, uh, the Parliament is moving to decriminalize, we are, should have put in a place an education program. We'll finally move to do that with the money that we're freeing up from charging people for simple possession of plot. Instead of saying, well, look, there's a, a framework that we can add to it and look at various other successful countries who've decriminalized possession of plot. Instead of doing all of that, we have Liberals today with a prohibition speech, prohibition speaking notes, saying that they are not going to move in any way to address the concerns of those tens of thousands of Canadians that will acquire a criminal record uh, over the course of the next year because of Liberal actions. And these are Canadians who, in good faith, many of them would have voted Liberal because they assumed the Liberals were actually going to keep their promise about uh, moving to legalize uh, marijuana. So it's not about anything other than a, a Liberal government saying it would act differently and now acting exactly the same way that the Conservative government uh, acted when they were in power, Mr. Speaker. And what that meant in 2014, as you know, is 57,000, more than 57,000 Canadians being arrested for simple possession of pot. What that meant in 2014 is millions of dollars spent on enforcing marijuana laws that the Liberals said during the election campaign they had no intention of reinforcing. In fact, Mr. Speaker, and I need to bring this up, uh, the commitment that was made by the Prime Minister and by Liberal candidates across the country was the following. Legalize marijuana by removing marijuana consumption and incidental possession from the criminal code. And so the motion that the NDP is bringing forward today, which is a motion that strikes uh, historically to what the NDP has always fought for, for 
for almost 50 years. We've been saying it makes no sense to have this war on drugs to arrest people, to incarcerate people for simple possession of marijuana for personal use. I've been saying it for nearly 50 years, Mr. Speaker, and the Liberals said that in the last election campaign and today and tomorrow when the vote is held, it is obvious that they are going to betray Canadians that voted for them uh, on that basis, on the basis they would actually be keeping their commitment. Now, Mr. Speaker, there is no doubt where Canadians uh, stand. There is absolutely no doubt. Canadians stand with the NDP caucus on this and, and other parties that have also spoken out, like the Green Party, against this uh, ridiculous concept that we should continue to give people criminal records that will, they'll have to carry forward for the rest of their lives, which will make it more difficult for them to travel, which will make it more difficult for them to acquire, uh, acquire jobs. That, that what we actually need to do is put in a place a simple uh, and smart decriminalization policy so that if the Liberals do intend in their second term eventually to keep their promise, that we won't see tens of thousands of more Canadians, 20-something Canadians, acquiring a criminal record that ruins their lives, Mr. Speaker. So Canadians were asked, year before last, do they agree that possession of small amounts of marijuana for personal use should not be a crime. And this is what they said. 68% of Canadians right across the country said that they ag agree with that statement, that, that decriminalization as proposed today by the NDP is what they believe in. Now, only 20% uh, 20, 20 believe in what the Liberals and Conservatives believe in, which is continued incarceration, arrests, continued attacks against those who have small amounts of marijuana for personal use, the prohibition uh, gambit, the war on drugs started by the Conservatives, continued by the Liberals. Uh, most Canadians disagree with them. In British Columbia, in my province, Mr. Speaker, 73 percent Canadians agree with the NDP's decriminalization motion. In Alberta, 64 percent. In Ontario, 70 percent. In Quebec, 64 percent. In Atlantic Canada, the highest of all, Mr. Speaker, 75 percent. So Atlantic Canadian Liberal MPs who are giving this, uh, these prohibition speeches today are out of touch with three-quarters of residents of Atlantic Canadian. Uh, and, Mr. Speaker, when we talk about, uh, as I mentioned earlier, even among Conservative supporters, a majority believe in decriminalization. Among Liberal Party supporters, it's 74 percent. Three quarters of Liberal Party supporters believe in the NDP's motion that we're bringing forward today for decriminalization. So, Mr. Speaker, it's very simple. If the government really believed in education around this, instead of spending millions of dollars every year in, in uh, prosecuting and arresting people for simple possession of marijuana, they would actually be taking that money and investing it in education programs. If they really believed in putting in place a, a legal framework, they would look to countries like Portugal, Mr. Speaker, that have decriminalized. And in the case of, of uh, Portugal, a recent article by the Journal of the American Bar Foundation Law and Social Inquiry said the following, judged by virtually every metric, the Portuguese decriminalization framework has been a resounding success. So, Mr. Speaker, when you look at that example, you look at the Netherlands, you can look at countries worldwide that have decriminalized. And those examples are there for the government to take. As the member from Victoria said earlier today, we're agnostic on how the government wants to go about decriminalization, but we believe strongly that 20-something Canadians or Canadians of uh, adults of any age who have simple possession of marijuana for personal use should not be arrested and should not be facing a criminal record for the rest of their lives. Now, well, Mr. Speaker, it's a very simple proposition. We saw it at the Conservative Convention where conservative, even Conservative delegates voted for decriminalization. We saw in the commitments that were made by the Liberal Party in the last election that it is time to stop putting, arresting people and putting them behind, behind bars for simple possession of marijuana for personal use. In our party, we've stood up for that for 50 years. And we bring forward this motion, Mr. Speaker, because we believe, as I've proven earlier, that all Canadians believe it's time to stop arresting people for this. And if Liberal and Conservative MPs are true to their party's principles and true to what they said during the election campaign, they'll be voting for our motion tomorrow when it's brought before the House of Commons. Thank you, Mr. Speaker.
Questions and comments? The Honourable Member for Scarborough Southwest. Speaker, uh, there are just a couple of points I wanted to qualify. First of all, um, our Prime Minister has made it very clear in the campaign, and most particularly in the throne speech, of our intention in this mandate to bring forward legislation to legalize, regulate, and restrict marijuana. We have not been ambiguous in any way, and, and the suggestion otherwise is simply not factually correct. I just wanted to, to, to I was wondering, Mr. Speaker, as I listened to, to the member from uh, Burnaby New Westminster in, in his remarks, um, why he was so afraid to say legalize, regulate, and restrict. He focused very, very clearly on one aspect of our government's policy in which we said we will, we will legalize marijuana. But we have also been equally clear about the importance. And, and this is not based on ideology or the latest po popular poll that they seem to rely on so much across the hall, but it relies on science. It relies on the best adv advice that we have received from, for example, the Centre of Addiction and Mental Health, which is the preeminent mental health and addiction facility in all of Canada, on research that we have done and looked at the example in other jurisdictions, such as Washington and Colorado. Overwhelmingly, the science says that in order to address all of the social and health harms associated to cannabis use, that the proper approach is legalization coupled with an effective, comprehensive, and responsible system of regulation to, on production, distribution, and consumption. And for some reason, and I've listened carefully to all of the NDP members who've spoken today, they are all loath to acknowledge all of the government's policy. They speak only of legalization, and yet, and yet they neglect to include that. So I'd ask the member opposite if perhaps he could address the issue of the importance of effective regulation to protect our kids, to protect our communities, to take billions of dollars of profit away from organized crime, and to protect the health of Canadians. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. And uh, I'm, I'm happy to reply to the, the, to the member and, and to reiterate the incredible confusion that this Liberal government has brought in in their first eight months of the mandate. First, first saying that they would move rapidly, then saying, no, they won't, then saying around the 420 they had a big announcement to make, which turned out to be no announcement at all, just a, basically another delay of another year. And there have been Liberal members, and the member from Scarborough Southwest is one of them, that have said that they'll find it difficult to tackle it in their first mandate. So when you take all of those comments, you see the confusion that is taking place with law enforcement across the country. The member from Victoria spoke very eloquently about that earlier today, that uh, what we're seeing is a, a, a similar level of uh, arrests uh, and prosecution for simple possession of marijuana uh, by, by Canadians in some parts of the country, uh, law enforcement uh, officials moving off in other parts of the country. Total confusion. Total chaos, Mr. Speaker. And so... Uh, with a, a very effective motion like we're seeing today from the NDP, what I, I have to ask Liberal members is why they are backing off the commitment that they made to legalize marijuana by removing marijuana consumption and incidental possession from the criminal code. What we have done in our motion today, what the NDP has done, simply put forward what a lot of Liberals were talking about during the election campaign as a first step in terms of legalization. And the Liberal government, in its first eight months, has offered absolutely nothing in terms of a framework around the laws that they were talking about, a regulatory framework that they've been talking about. And what they have done is uh, put a lot of confusion out there by talking about different dates, different process, a different way of proceeding. And, Mr. Speaker, that makes me very, very skeptical that the Liberals are even going to keep their promise on this. I think it'll be uh, part of the over 100 promises that they've broken why they intend to keep putting people in jail and keep arresting people for simple possession of pot is something that Liberals are going to have to defend this summer. Before, uh, before resuming debate, I just want to remind them, the Honourable Members to just look up front, and when you see my finger going like this, maybe just speed it up a bit. Those were two very good discussions that took place, but it did take up a lot of time, and it really encroaches. So it's partially my fault, but partially, if everyone can just pay attention, I don't want to cut anything off because it is a very, a very, uh, a very uh, interesting uh, discussion that's taking place. Uh, resuming debate, the Honourable.